Hey, can everybody hear me? Okay, awesome. My name is John Miserak. Uh, I'm in my final semester here at St. Ed's for my undergrad. Uh, also, I'm a veteran of the United States military. I've traveled all over. I got experience a lot. Uh, some good, some not so good. Uh, to preface this, my friend is fine. But uh, in 2012, I had a friend step on a landmine in Afghanistan. Uh, he never lost his spirit once. He's still serving to this day. He's great. But I was able to learn a lot through his process of what he kind of went through when it, be, when it came to prosthetics, how they work, and everything like that. Uh, I realized he also really never lost his spirit because he had no other issues to really deal with. Insurance is not a concern. And that's kind of when I become recently thinking about those that are underinsured or without insurance. I also learned that a boot is a separate piece of equipment. It's what kind of connects the residual limb to the prosthetic and that there are two main types. Uh, one boot is made of poron urethane and the other of a carbon fiber. They both have their benefits and their drawbacks, but neither one can really excel. We're hoping that there's kind of like a, a hybrid of the two that exist. If not, we will kind of work on creating our own, our own down the road. And uh, we've done our due diligence on what it takes to be DEMPO certified through the Department of Health and Human Services if we need to. Uh, regardless, our solution is developing an application that takes a quick series of pictures, creating data points and measurements to a precise degree. The applications targeting the Apple iPhone 12 and the new iPad Pro, uh, the single platform will allow us to focus on utilizing the new LiDAR technology uh, for fast, accurate scans on the target area by an experienced users. Our app is being built in Unity using AR Foundation 4.1 to take advantage of the new depth scanning and mesh construction tools in the AR Foundation library. We have a few avenues of revenue but the main one we're focusing on is that uh, consumers will be able to download the app for free, take a scan, create a 3D model for free. But as soon as they want to export it or save it to their doctor, then it'll be a small one-time fee. And my time is up. Thank you. Your time is up, John. John, you didn't quite say this, but I'm I'm inferring and I'm I'm filling in maybe some blanks. I just want to make sure. Um, the scan you, you're helping make a better prosthetic through this AR slash scanning app. Is that is that it? So this is really hard to explain in two minutes, but we are doing nothing with prosthetics exactly. We had there's a second piece. It's called a boot. That is what actually goes to like the residual limb. Ah. Connects to the prosthetic itself. I understand. Got it. You're making a better boot to attach a prosthetic or something like that. We are making a solution to uh, fit people for boots quicker and faster. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So, what, John? What are your next steps for funding this? Uh, right now, we have we haven't really thought about it. I have a friend on board already as my CTO. He's got. 10 years experience, he's an engineer. He was a previous engineer with Google and he has a lot of, I mean, he, his focus was running like uh, the AR department. So he has, he's, he's building the application. Uh, beyond that, we're just kind of bootstrapping until we get to a point that we can kind of become big. There's a few companies I'd like to kind of partner with. That's Doctors Without Borders. I mean, imagine a doctor six months in a war-torn country in a small town. They take 50 pictures or give us 50, they upload 50, you know, 3D models to us. We push the order through to the supplier. They create these custom boots, ship them directly out to the Doctors Without Borders in that town. You know, they go out with medicine, tools, wherever they can, but they, they can't go out with prosthetics or anything custom. Now everybody has a custom boot, and from there, anything to attach to it. 
And John, is there anything like this in the market right now, or is your focus being more custom? I know you mentioned the word custom a lot. Is your focus being more of the custom fit? Uh, a little bit more of the custom fit. Uh, right now, there's processes uh, with the more inexpensive uh, with the more inexpensive boot. All you need is a tape measure. Uh, you kind of measure the residual limb at you know two three different places. You measure the taper. That's all you need. It's about a 15, 20 minute process. Uh, a friend of mine I consulted with, worked with one of the three, you know, leading companies regarding prosthetics. And he says he think it would kind of be a waste of time because, you know, patients already have to be in there regardless. 20 minutes isn't, but I told him 20 minutes is everything. If all of your patients require, you know, measurement, you have 10 patients a day, you're say, you know, you're adding five additional patients to that day by saving 15 minutes. Uh, uh, casting or molding, taking an actual physical mold. This is where, this is the closest thing that right now that you have to custom that's financially reasonable, especially without insurance. Uh, the other thing is there is a, there's like a, it's a light box. It's about $6,000 that some orthotists use where they will scan the limb, it creates a 3D model. But unless you want to go that route, it's basically a $6,000 paperweight. Uh, what happens is they tend to try to schedule their patients' appointments all around the same time. Somebody owns this machine and they bring it around to different offices to use. So no actual orthotist really owns one by themselves. This would be a doctor or patient using their phone creating the exact same precision scan that machine does in the exact same amount of time, if not quicker and easier and a lot more cost effective. I have one quick question, which is you mentioned the specific tech that is needed in the Apple iPhone, et cetera. And I just had this debate with the client when I said, you do realize that that's only 50% of your market right? Like there's a huge Android. And then the, just because someone doesn't have insurance doesn't mean that they're financially viable to own tech of that level. So have you thought of backend processes to accommodate that, especially like a doctors without borders kind of situation? We have not, we know this tech is like brand new. That's why we're like introducing it to the market right now. This camera and this technology, it's, it's going to be available in the Android eventually. Um, I think it's already in, honestly available in the Google, the new Google Pixel 5, I think. Don't quote me on that. Uh, past that, I've seen other applications that were developed for the iPhone 12, but have been able to work with earlier editions. I don't know specifically if ours will or not. We've got to get into that testing. But no, as of right now, for what our app, for what our app is, idea solution, you will need a smartphone, but you know maybe one town can have a smartphone or access to it at some point, and the entire town can use it. Hey John, this is Linus. A quick question for you. Um, just trying to make sure I captured uh, the, the salient points of, of your pitch. You talked about um, customization as sort of one of the key differentiators. It seemed also, again, I just want to clarify, you talked about maybe a speed to production or cost effectiveness. Could you just maybe just round off what are the key differentiators to the customer that makes your percent of your product different than what they could put, potentially get from the market today? So right now, basically, we are just trying to provide the solution and the boot. There's nothing really custom about that. It's just quicker, easier. It's going to be more widely available to anybody from there. Uh, what's a big kind of confusing thing is that prosthetics are different from DME, which is durable medical equipment. A prosthetic is something that is actually fully functional. Uh, you know, just like cell phones, they go up and as they become more advanced, they, they're phased out. So unless you have the best insurance or hundreds of thousands of dollars, a fully functioning prosthetic is out of the question for most people. DME, that's where you have, you know, the actual like limb that it just looks like something. That's it. There's no real function to it. It's just kind of to make you look 
normal, dare I say. What we want to do is provide just the boot. Uh, so in the United States, it has to be a DME. We can't market anything else. We can't sell anything else. But if we provide the boot, there is nothing from stopping somebody to going down to their local artist or their woodworker or their metal shop and saying, can you just fabricate me a piece of art that looks like this? And they can attach that. It's getting away from this, I need to blend into society, this you know, we've gone through hair coloring and piercings and body modifications, tattoos. There's so many people out there with residual limbs, missing limbs, that they have to kind of try to blend in because that's kind of what society says. I believe it's kind of a lot of control based on those big three companies that control the market. They're going to lose a lot of, you know, money and stuff like that if, you know, we give the availability and the solution that people can now make their own. It doesn't have to look like a hand. The hand is a beautiful design. Four fingers, the opposable thumb. If you don't have one and you can afford to buy one, if not, why why try to recreate this? This, it, it does nothing. I would rather want something that is functional, something that I could just quickly attach a knife to. And now I'm back in the kitchen. Now I'm doing culinary arts. Uh, take it off, switch it out, switch it in something else, have all different kinds of attachments, make it functional over making it, you know, normal. That's, that's the longer term vision that I have for this company. We'll provide the solution that will allow everyone to have a custom fitted boot for the residual limb so that hopefully they can then create, create art, show off, make, make something functional that, you know, they can do. There's nothing stopping from someone from putting wheels on a lower leg. Why, why not? Thanks, John.